Hey, we're back. Um, how's this for a crazy point of view uh, from my cell phone because I'm too lazy to set up an intro shot and I just want to go right to the workbench and get to work. Let's take a look at this thing. I got the uh, chips in today. You know what? I ordered them on Amazon. I have never done that before. I thought I'd give it a shot and I got some NE5532s for like, I don't know, I think it was less than 10 bucks for 10 of them. And uh, so first thing we're going to do is replace that and see what happens. And this time around, I'm going to take the necessary uh, protocols on static arrest. So I've got a jumper that comes from ground over here on my isolation transformer. I'm going to connect that to one of the headphone jack ground points. I've got my static wrist strap that I made. I think this is that's yeah, a twist of flex. Yeah, how about that? A twist of flex static arrest band made from a watch band and uh, an alligator clip lead that's it simple that's all you need something like that so that the uh, any static doesn't run through the chip to ground i've got a piece of uh, um, anti-static foam there that i can put the chip on i'm just going to grab the thing pull it out of there we'll shove it on that foam put it aside for now let's grab a new one get a newbie out of here I'm just gonna grab that with the little pliers. Can you see that? Anyway, there's a, a little dimple on the end near the Texas Instruments logo. The, looks like the state of Texas. Um, right there to your left of that dimple is pin one. On the opposite of that is pin eight. All right. Okay, now that we've got all those static arrest protocols in place, let's put this thing in. You might have to adjust the pins a little to fit the uh, dip socket. Okay, it's in. All right, let's power it up. Power up the LM386. Power this up. Hey, hey, one, two, one, two, one, two. Nothing still. What the hell? You know what? I'm going to start just some basic troubleshooting and checking power here. My uh, digital meter. <laughs> is uh, out at the moment so let's see let me see if I can get in tight here and we'll uh, do some probing at the chip and see if we've actually got voltage getting there for starters okay let's see Move over here and probe the battery yeah battery's good there at the battery um, pins four and eight should be ground and positive respectively so there's pin one two three four let's put the probe there pin eight hey I got no power at pin eight what the shit okay let's see battery comes in right here negative side there's the positive rail all right I got voltage there shouldn't have voltage also down here no what the hell aha there's no voltage at this part of the rail on the negative but there is on that first pin hmm you know what sucks my eyesight's not what it used to be and um once in a while i'll do stuff and look it over without my glasses on from far away and everything looks great I got a feeling that I didn't really bridge those two. I've got to have my freaking eyeballs now away from work I do about 18 to 20 inches if I want to focus on it unless I have reading glasses on. It's a real pain in the ass. <laughs> All right, enough bitching. That is fully bridged across there now. That whole thing is the negative, negative power rail. So, Turn the switch on. Yeah. Oh, we might have a working amplifier now. Okay, everything's plugged in. Channel 2, same one I was testing before. LM386 on. The band aid turned on. Hello? Hello? Oh. <laughs> How about that? Uh, it's working now. Nice. And uh, the volume 
is actually it's in reverse right now it's flipped the other way i questioned that i should have left it alone in the circuit because if i turn it all the way what would be down i'm at full gain right now but if i turn it all the way clockwise see it loses gain yeah i gotta put those wires back the way they're supposed to be on the schematic so the schematic was right everything's okay and i'm only inches from the speaker that's why i'm getting feedback going on so that's the dynamic mic let's um dig out that condenser mic and test that out okay there's the little condenser mic hooked up everything's turned off i got the volume all the way down let's turn this on creep up on the volume a bit check 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 oops wait a minute i gotta switch over to condenser check 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 not working hmm interesting okay wait a minute i just found another condenser mic the one that came uh, with it isn't working. So here's this. That's the second one I have. Had it in the drawer of junk up here somewhere. So I'm on channel one. Whoa, yeah, so that's, holy shit, yeah, that's working. I can turn the LM386 down to about halfway. And I've got shite loads of gain. That's at 1K. That's at 2.2. I guess maybe 1, 2.2. Wow, well, sensitivity on 2.2 is wicked. So, what if we put it there? Yeah, it gets real sensitive. Um, almost like a lavalier at that point. How about that? Got some ringing feedback though. All right, well that takes care of channel two, or one. Let's check two. Switch this over. Awesome, funky mic. Was so, <laughs> looks like I had some shit components in that kit, whatever. It was only $7.99. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, we got some wicked feedback there. I got some intermittency going on someplace. Okay, plugged into channel two. Yep, we're there. Whoa, whoa, hello. All right, so the only thing I need to do is get these volume pots flipped around the other way, solder up wise, and we're done. This thing works, man. Um, I'll have to try it on a guitar too, just to see what it does. Might get some cool fuzz out of it, I don't know. Maybe I'll do something with this circuit as a bass um, circuit to add on to, and maybe do some future stuff for musical instruments, who knows. Anyway, it works, we got it working. I'm glad um, we're rocking out here. DJ Dean, all right. Okay, the only way to get a true test here is to stuff it all back in the box. Got to have all the pieces in there, right? To see if it really is going to work. But right now, I'd just like to see it working with the door closed. Hello. There we go. Look at that. It works. How about that? So, um... Channel one's okay. Channel two, are you there? Channel two with your sketchy little freaking jack that likes to screw up. All right, a little bit of work to be done on channel two. But we can take care of that when we do those volume pots. Cramming those quarter inch jacks in there, believe me, is really tight. I think what I need to do is just cut off any external um, connectors that I don't need and then just button it all up and call it good. The Band-Aid, it lives, it does work. And um, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, thanks for the donations, thanks for, thanks for everything. Thanks for just paying attention and trying to be a smarter person all right, until next time, some Jimi Hendrix feedback just for you. Really annoying.